Hello, and welcome to this online training on Intel Agilix 5 SOC FPGA software development flow. Feel free to pause, move forward, or go back as you need during this presentation. At the top right of the presentation, you will find a list of helpful links and resources on the subject. Let's get started. The Intel FPGA portfolio supports this transformation, including discrete and integrated FPGAs that are expected to improve processing efficiency, task specificity, and connectivity. Intel FPGAs can provide a variety of workloads in network processing as well as compute and storage acceleration. FPGAs are mass-produced, standard product ICs that can be reconfigured in the field to accelerate virtually any digital algorithm. They offer greater throughput, execution speed, and energy efficiency than CPUs on computationally intensive parts of algorithms, but with the ability to adapt quickly to changes in algorithms, data patterns, or performance needs. They can be reconfigured in the field to accelerate virtually any digital algorithm. They are available in five current families, Max, Cyclone, Aria, Stratix, and the newest family Agilix, all with of increasing capacity, performance, and feature sets. The objectives for this e-learning are to describe the flow and tools for software development for Intel Agilix 5 SOC FPGAs and understand the booting stages and tools needed to implement an embedded operating system. First, here is an overview of the architecture for Intel Agilix 5 SOC FPGAs. The SOC has available dual-core ARM Cortex-A76 with up to 1.8 GHz and ARM Cortex-A55 with up to 1.5 GHz processors. The FPGA features include 8 input logic function and variable precision DSP blocks. With 4 processor cores, 64-bit register size, 32-bit instruction size, supports hypervisor and coherency with fabric access to SDRAM. Cache sizes are, for A76 64 kilobytes L1, 256 kilobytes L2, and for A55 to 32 kilobytes L1, 128 kilobytes. To get started with the development, you will need Intel Cordis Prime software, including the Intel Cordis Programmer, device support and you can use Ashling risk-free IDE for Intel FPGAs as a debugging tool. A Linux environment with the suggested distribution and a serial terminal. Please take a look at the flow and available resources inside rocketboards.org for a detailed package and toolchain install for each device. You can go to our website for more information on development kits and schematics to get started with your development. To start to look into developing with SOC FPGA and learning more about Intel Solutions, the website that provides technical reference manuals and descriptions is intel.com with content and direct links provided for documentation. You can also navigate to rocketboards.org to find projects and boot flows that can also help you get started with the first implementations. Depending on the configuration and booting scheme, you can follow the steps in each case for JTAG, QSPY, AVST, protocol, or remote system update. To configure the hard processor system in the SOC FPGA, you can use Intel Cordis Prime software and Platform Designer. The system generation in Platform Designer and Project Compilation will generate the necessary files for software handoff and hardware verification. These files are necessary for the development of the rest of the flow. The settings inside Platform Designer system affect the device configuration and HPS booting. The configuration files are created by the Intel Cortis Prime Programming File Generator using the following inputs. SOF file resulted from compilation of the hardware project in Intel Cortis Prime software. HPS first stage bootloader hex file resulted from compiling an HPS bootloader, Intel Cortis Prime firmware, which ends up running on the SDM. The first stage of the flow is the reset to have the device in a known state running from the reset vector. Then the boot preparation puts the first stage bootloader in the on-chip RAM. 
The first stage bootloader sets up the SD RAM and the interface where the second stage bootloader is stored. You can use U-Boot or ATF. Then the second stage bootloader initializes a robust set of peripherals to boot Linux OS or Zephyr from and provides early user functions. The operating system stage starts the embedded OS and all the way to the application. You can configure to boot from QSPY attached to SDM or the default option SD card, for example. You can program the Intel Agilex 5 SOC device to configure the FPGA first and then boot the HPS. The available configuration data sources configure the FPGA core first in this mode. After completion, you may optionally boot the HPS. All of the IOs, including the HPS allocated IO, are configured and brought out of tri state. If the HPS is not booted, the HPS is held in reset. HPS dedicated IO are held in reset. HPS allocated IO are driven with reset values from the HPS. If the FPGA is configured before the HPS boots, the boot flow looks like the example figure below. The flow includes the time from power on reset, TPOR, to boot completion, tboot underscore complete. The power on reset puts the device in a known state as a starting point for the booting process. After this time, power on, when T1 is happening as seen in the slide, the SDM samples the M cell pins, hardware, to determine the configuration scheme and boot source. Then SDM establishes the device security level based on E fuse values. Then the SDM initializes the device by reading the configuration firmware. This is a portion of the bitstream from the boot source. SDM authenticates and decrypts the configuration firmware and starts executing the configuration firmware. During this time, SDM IO are enabled and the SDM configures the FPGA IO and core full configuration. The SDM loads the first stage bootloader from the bitstream into HPS on chip RAM. The HPS boot core starts executing first stage bootloader code. The SDM configuration firmware enables HPS SD RAM IO after the first stage bootloader is loaded and enables HPS debug optionally. Then the FPGA is in user mode and the HPS is released from reset. In FPGA configuration first mode, the SDM extracts and loads the first stage bootloader into the on-chip RAM of the HPS. The SDM releases the HPS from reset after the FPGA has entered user mode. After the HPS exits reset, it uses the first stage bootloader hardware handoff file to set up the clocks, HPS dedicated IOs, and peripherals. Typically, the first stage bootloader then loads the second stage bootloader into HPS SD RAM and passes control to the second stage bootloader. You can create the first and second stage bootloaders from one of the following sources. U-Boot, ARM trusted firmware, Intel provides the source code for both on GitHub. The second stage bootloader is the second boot stage for the HPS. During this time, the first stage bootloader initiates the copy of the second stage bootloader to the HPS SD RAM. The second stage bootloader typically enables more advanced peripherals such as Ethernet and supports command line interface. The HPS bootstrap completes and the OS is loaded into SD RAM. Intel provides the Golden System Reference Design, GSRD which includes the Linux kernel and a root file system built with Yocto recipes, or you can also build the binaries. Intel also provides a set of Zephyr drivers as a reference for RTOS support. One of the changes from FPGA first when working with HPS first, the SDM only performs EMIF IO configuration early in the boot, so the first stage bootloader boot starts sooner. 
The second stage bootloader controls the configuring of the FPGA core. After bootstrap completes, any of the following steps may occur. The FPGA core configuration loads into SD RAM from one of the following sources. SDM flash, HPS alternate flash, EMAC interface. HPS requests that the SDM configures the FPGA core. Note. This step is applicable for U-Boot ATF Linux boot only. For ATF Linux boot and ATF Zephyr boot, the FPGA configuration happens in the next stage. FPGA enters user mode. OS is loaded into SD RAM. Hardware projects have settings that will influence the configuration and can be entered by the user. Depending on the device, the handoff files will provide information for the bootloader and receive the settings provided by the project files. After project compilation as described in the hardware development flow, the files produced are necessary to continue with software development. This allows the configuration of HPS and other elements in the system design to be communicated to the rest of the steps for developing the pieces for the booting stages. The file contains information on HPS pin multiplexing configuration for example, and including HPS dedicated I.O. settings and export to FPGA settings, HPS clock configuration, HPS second stage bootloader source. The first stage bootloader is the first booting stage for the HPS. You can create the necessary files from the sources provided by Intel in GitHub on U-Boot and ARM trusted firmware repositories. The second stage bootloader is the second part of the booting stage for the HPS. The first stage bootloader starts the copy of the second stage bootloader to the HPS SD RAM enabling more advanced peripherals such as Ethernet. To get started with building the software pieces for each of the booting stages a toolchain is needed. The toolchain is required to perform a complex task that produces software. Depending on your application requirements, you may implement a conventional embedded OS or an RTOS. Intel provides the Golden System Reference Design, GSRD, which includes the Linux kernel and a root file system built with Yocto recipes or you can also build the binaries for Linux separately. The Golden Hardware Reference Design, GHRD, is the hardware project and starting point to begin your designs using Intel Cortis Prime software. Intel also provides a set of Zephyr drivers as a reference for AR TOS support. We have now covered several of the pieces needed for building the whole software flow for each one of the stages. The first and second stage bootloaders that are built from U-Boot or ATF GitHub repositories, then the Linux kernel and root file system that can be built with Yocto recipes or piece by piece, or it you are using Zephyr following that flow. One of the files also needed for booting is the device tree source file. A device tree is a data structure for describing hardware configuration. It is used to indicate the devices that are available at runtime and describe non-discoverable devices present at runtime. The drivers are loaded dynamically after loading device tree. To change the source file, it needs to be compiled into binary form by a compiler tool. Parsed by kernel code at boot time. Three booting flows are supported to Linux OS or Zephyr from U-Boot or ARM trusted firmware. The execution level for ARM trusted firmware goes from EL3 to EL0, describing the convention recommended when developing with ATF. Low level firmware is EL3, hypervisor EL2, and EL1 is the operating system. BL31 is the resident runtime firmware. The steps for the boot flow are 1. The configuration management firmware, CMF, running on the SDM loads the first stage bootloader, which is U-Boot SPL, into HPS on chip RAM and then brings the HPS boot core out from reset. 2. The U-Boot SPL loads the second stage bootloader, which is ATFBL31 and U-Boot proper, into DDR. 
3. The U-Boot SPL jumps to the ATF BL-31. 4. The ATF BL-31 sets up the GIC, L3 environment, and initializes the PSCI services. 5. The ATF BL-31 jumps to the U-Boot proper. 6. The U-Boot proper loads the Linux OS into the DDR. 7. The U-Boot jumps to the Linux OS. ATF BL2 is the first stage bootloader in this case. The booting stages are 1. The configuration management firmware, CMF, running on the SDM loads the first stage bootloader, which is ATF BL2, into HPS on chip RAM and then brings the HPS boot core out from reset. 2. The ATF BL2 loads the second stage bootloader OS, which are ATFBL31 and Linux OS, into DDR. 3. The ATFBL2 jumps to ATFBL31. 4. The ATFBL31 sets up the GIC, EL3 environment, and initializes the PSCI services. 5. The ATFBL31 jumps to the Linux OS. The booting steps for this boot flow are 1. The configuration management firmware, CMF, running on the SDM loads the first stage bootloader, which is ATFBL2, into HPS on chip RAM and then bring the HPS boot core out from reset. 2. The ATFBL2 loads the second stage bootloader and OS, which are ATFBL31 and Zephyr RTOS, into DDR. 3. The ATFBL2 jumps to ATFBL31. 4. The ATFBL31 sets up the GIC, L3 environment, and initializes the PSCI services. 5. The ATFBL31 jumps to the Zephyr RTOS. For more information on this subject or others, you can refer to our resources available. Intel provides multiple avenues in which to learn about Intel FPGA products. There is the Intel FPGA YouTube channel, which contains 5 minutes quick videos along with longer, more in-depth training videos. There is the Intel FPGA training website, where you can access e-learning courses made up of narrated slides presented in an interactive player, some courses with labs and demos. Lastly, you can also enroll in a live, instructor-led course presented either in person at an office local to you or virtually over the web. All instructor-led courses have hands-on labs exercises to practice the concepts you learn. If you need more assistance, Intel FPGA provides many self-help resources for you to access. For example, there are web pages, called landing pages, dedicated to specific FPGA technology-like and high-speed interfaces. You can also view and post questions to the community forum, which is monitored by skilled Intel FPGA applications engineers. The Intel FPGA training team is always looking to improve our material and welcome any feedback you may have. Please email FPGA training at intel.com with any of your thoughts or comments. This concludes the training. Thank you and have a good day.